Now we're on ECG exercise number 12 on page 90 of your Cardiac Dysrhythmia Interpretation Workbook. And um, again, at a glance, this looks like a tachycardia, pretty fast heart rate. This is an adult. And as I mentioned earlier, you can assume that all the ECGs in your exercise book are from adult patients unless I state otherwise. So the heart rate here is about 210. And um, let's just measure it out here. So we'll take, uh, you can pick any one of them. Well, let's pick this one. Okay, let's go back near the beginning. So here's an R wave that falls in a dark line. The heart rate here is 300, 150. The difference between 300, I'm going to draw the small, and 150 is 150 divided by 5 small squares is 30. So that's 150, uh, 180, 210. That's where I got that 210 from. P waves are not discernible. And, uh, you know, you notice there are little glitches here. Okay, glitches here. Don't get sucked in by the glitch. All right. What's important here is this is a resting adult with a heart rate of 210. This is not normal. And this can't possibly be a sinus tachycardia, right? Because adults don't mount a sinus tachycardia greater than 160 at rest. It just does not happen. So this has to be some kind of abnormal dysrhythmia. Peer interval is not applicable. Um, since we don't have P waves, QRS is narrow. It's less than 0.12 second. The ratio, not applicable, right? Because we don't have P waves. All we have are those glitches. And the rhythm is irregular. So when you have a heart rate this high and you have uh, no discernible P waves and a narrow QRS, this can only be one thing, and that is a supraventricular heart. Uh, su sorry, supraventricular tachycardia with a heart rate of 210 or an SVT with a heart rate of 210. And again, the key is here that this is a very fast, narrow complex tachycardia without clearly discernible P waves. So this is SVT. Now the question is, what's this patient's um, hemodynamic status with this heart rate of 210? Um, are they having chest pain, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, uh, depressed level of consciousness, unwell? All of those things are very important to determine how the patient is going to be treated. Do they need uh, pharmacological intervention like adenosine or uh, a calcium channel blocker, or are they hemodynamically unstable and require uh, synchronized cardioversion? That's the question.